Take two. Hello, uh, everyone. I'm going to do a brief uh, talk. Um, I don't know how uh, this recording is coming out because I have the fan on in the background. Um, I want to uh, talk about how uh, my mental illness is still affecting my functionality. And I'm sharing this because it may be a relatable topic. Um, been studying something called executive functioning, and you can search that on the search engine if you'd like, or AI or whatever you're equipped with on your uh, devices or your computers. Uh, executive functioning is basically your ability to uh, do things like read a bus schedule, pay a bill, talk to someone, ask someone a question, um, get information, give information. Basically, it's what you need for employment, you know, for a job or for your basic functioning throughout the day. And especially when you're dealing with people or when you're dealing with something that requires much concentration, like figuring out, you know, those things I just mentioned. And um, also, executive functioning can be very useful when you are trying to go out and leave the house. One of the reasons I have fear of leaving the house, agoraphobia, is because I have very poor executive functioning. Um, part of my training right now in my mental wellness process is learning how to uh, have executive functioning right now when there's noise in the background that's really loud. I'm going to see if I can make an adjustment on the fan. Okay, I think I, I just did, because that was distracting me. I think that would even make somebody with uh, very skilled executive functioning a little bit crazy. You know, noise can be distracting. So, um, getting out, um, if you've got health problems like mine, like mine, if you're in pain off and on very often, or if you're, you've got fatigue, executive functioning may be as tricky as being able to wonder if you can, uh, walk across the living room to the front door to open the door and uh, go out and down the steps outside the apartment building without uh, tripping and falling. So um, that can also be from having low self-confidence in my case, maybe in yours too. You know, you, you may be able to relate to this subject, you, you may not be, but I really need to talk about it because um, sometimes I need to talk about my progress in my mental wellness process. I need to be real. I don't want to come off like a guru or a doula or some expert that's perfect at dealing with uh, mental, mental illness or emotional upset or life issues. So executive functioning and self-confidence. Uh, they're crucial in my module of emotions and thoughts process. And... Um, I got frustrated yesterday because I missed I missed another date with my other two uh, girlfriends. Um, I didn't men I don't think I mentioned this um, there in my uh, Hub Hopper podcast, but I mentioned it in my Spotify for Podcasters podcast. And um, I just want to briefly share that um, I had a monogamous girlfriend for the past uh, seven years. Um, and recently, um, I didn't mention this before, I was too tired from the holiday holiday fatigue to uh, mention it, and I'd already talked about it on my other podcast. I'm in a poly relationship. Um, yes, sorry, Bob, I'm dating polyamory. Figure that out. You can turn off this podcast right now if you don't want to hear about it. I'm not going to get very graphic. I'm just going to talk about my executive functioning again. I missed my dates with my other two uh, girlfriends yesterday because I had issues with my executive functioning. Um, I've been re really tired from sleep deprivation because our neighbors upstairs have been especially noisy. They recently got a new pet, which is fine with me, but it's made them noisier because they're, they're running around and playing with the dog all the time and me and my roommate have surmised that our neighbors don't just have a uh, 
a workday schedule. And what I mean by that is 15 hours of being awake and 8 hours of being asleep. I don't care if you do it night or nighttime or daytime. I don't give a darn because um, I, I do nights lots of times. But um, they do it all the time. They probably have different cars pulling up in the parking lot. We know that for a fact. They have different cars sharing the parking space. So there's probably a very large group of people living above us. So that means there there's a group of people um, up at night and another group of people up during the day. And I'm lucky if they go out at all and take the dog with them. You know, I'm lucky if that happens because then there's then there's some periods of peace and quiet, and we never know when there's going to be those periods of peace and quiet. So I've been very sleep deprived, and that's made my executive functioning worse. You can look that up too. Does sleep deprivation makes executive functioning problems worse? I missed my dates with my girlfriends uh, yesterday because um, I was tired and because I had to wait for a an Instacart delivery. And that took executive functioning, uh, ordering something again, because I had made a grocery order the day before, and which took some executive functioning. You know, it's even harder in, in some ways than shopping at the grocery store, because you're working on a computer and um, trying to figure out if you've punched the right button to uh, indicate the right item on the uh, app that you want to buy and then making sure you have the right uh, payment method you've got the right this and the right that and you got to communicate with your shopper and your delivery person and all that and that takes work and then there's talking to my roommate he's got issues with his own depression and I want to make sure he's he's okay um, I want to make sure he he knows that I care about him and there's there's someone he can talk to to and, and connect with I'm not just uh, living my own life and being a selfish asshole and, you know, leaving him out in the cold, you know. So I want to, you know, and I like I like talking to him. We have a lot of cool conversations. You know, we're friends, too. So, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of work for somebody who's dealing with mental illness. You know, don't get me wrong. It's a labor of love. I enjoy it, too. But... I ended up missing the dates because my executive functioning was burned out and fried up. And by the time I got done with the Instacart order, by the time I got done talking to my roommate, by the time I got breakfast and coffee, I needed, I wanted to come back in here to the back room and take a nap. Well, guess what? I fell asleep finally, and I slept the day. And I missed my dates. So um, there's clearly something I need to uh, work on there. Um, the hardest thing that I'm working on is being able to rest. Uh, I got my fan turned on really high because number one, it's hot in here and I haven't had the energy to, to set up my air conditioner. And number two, um, I'm trying to lean the fan up against, uh, some objects and my uh, trundle bed so that it'll vibrate and drown out the vibrations of the floors caused by these characters upstairs playing playing with their dog and running around I got nothing against them playing with their dog I'm glad they've got a new pet I'm happy for them but they're making so much noise and shaking my floor and keeping me awake and distracting me when I'm trying to work and uh, play on my phone and talk to my roommate it's a real drag so uh, one thing you, you can learn executive functioning if it's off it does affect your life, and it's not necessarily your fault. There may be environmental issues. There may be stuff from the past you haven't resolved. Um, it could be complex PTSD. It could be depression. It could be just what you're dealing with. I'm not a doctor or a therapist. I can't diagnose you, but my mental wellness process dictates that I do lots of research on myself and on human behavior, and it's fun, and it's work, and... Um, Good luck with your journey as well. Be safe.